Jake Wood, known for his role as Max Branning in EastEnders, has clarified that he currently has no intention of returning to the show despite the door being left open. His character, Max, departed over three years ago. Wood expressed his preference for Arsenal's Premier League victory over a potential comeback. Despite an open door, the beloved character from EastEnders says he has no plans to return. Fans shouldn't anticipate seeing Max back anytime soon, according to Jake Wood. Few former EastEnders characters are as iconic as Jake Wood's Max Branning, a fan favorite who appeared intermittently between 2006 and 2021. Max moved to Croatia after his affair with Linda Carter ended, and it has been more than three years since he was last seen on film. But some had questioned whether Wood would also be returning to the square after his daughter Lauren, played by Jacqueline Jossa, did so the previous year. Regretfully, it appears not, as Wood stated he has no plans to go back, in an interview with Kate Garraway and Ed Balls on Good Morning Britain today. Balls initially questioned Wood about which he believed was more likely, Max returning to EastEnders or Arsenal winning the Premier League. Wood responded, well, if you ask me which one I'd prefer, I'd prefer Arsenal to win the league. Most likely? I'm hoping Arsenal. It's not the longest shot in the world, as of this writing, as Arsenal leads the Premier League. I have no plans to go back, he said in response to this. At EastEnders, they haven't closed the door. I believe I haven't gone there in three and a half years. Yes, it has been a long time. Remember, never say never. Stacy Slater, played by Lacey Turner, started an affair with Scott Maslin's character Jack earlier this year after having an affair with Max. Later on, Jack turned out to be one of the six accomplices after learning the truth about Linda Carter's murder of Keanu Taylor and assisting them in covering up the crime. After over a year of fan speculation about the plot leading up to Christmas Day's shocking announcement, things seem to be heating up for the six and the internet closing in. For the most recent information on spoilers, interviews, and news, visit our dedicated EastEnders page. See our TV guide and streaming guide for more entertainment options. Get 10 copies of Radio Times magazine for only £10 when you subscribe today. Check out the Radio Times podcast for more content from the biggest names in television. Matt D'Angelo of EastEnders, Dean has to go back, even though he doesn't want to. It's the bad guy again, the night that serial killer Dean Wicks made his way back to Albert Square was unsettling for viewers of EastEnders. It appears that evil Dean will be around for a little while longer than most had anticipated, while Linda suffers from the trauma. The actor D'Angelo discussed his true motivation for returning and whether or not he has changed with the media, including Radiotimes.com. You haven't been on EastEnders for more than seven years. How does returning feel right now? It's wonderful to be back. It feels like a lifetime ago when I first started working at EastEnders over 18 years ago. I adore the people and the program, so I was excited to be asked again for a third time after a seven-year absence. How has filming in Elstree been going? Has a lot happened since your previous job? There are several physical modifications, yet the interiors and exteriors remain the same. There is even a completely new square that has the same exact appearance, laughs. Could you hint at what pulls Dean to the square again? To be honest, he has no desire to return to Walford. The fact that his daughter Jade is critically ill has kind of driven him back there. She needs a transplant at the nearest hospital since she has cystic fibrosis. They need to move quickly since Dean needs to reside there and be there for her appointments and in case the transplant goes through. He is hesitant to go back because he is aware of the consequences, but in the end, he must support his family. In order to support himself while he's there, Dean has invested in a new company, Beals Eels, which will eventually be revealed to be Cindy and Ian's new pie and mash establishment. There have been many rumors about your return. What was it about this plot that drew you back in? Not only did I think it was the proper time, but Dean did too. Dean would never have been able to return to the square while Mick was still alive because he would never have allowed it. This is understandable given that Dean's actions toward Linda are inexcusable and that even his parents, Shirley and Buster, abandoned him. However, since Linda no longer has Mick to support her, I believe that Dean's return has been made possible by Mick's death. Without Mick, Dean has more freedom to manipulate the story and a greater possibility of getting away with it. 
Dean never accepted responsibility for the rape of Linda during his final stay in Walford, and he entered a not guilty plea and was cleared off screen of any wrongdoing in relation to his attempted rape of Roxy. Is Dean now a different person or is he still the same spiteful person we knew? It's difficult to tell whether Dean acknowledges that he sexually assaulted Linda or if he is so unaware of his behavior that he doesn't believe he did anything wrong. As you observe him, you ask yourself, how can he be so deluded? However, I suppose that part of my role as an actor is to try and probe his innermost thoughts to find out if he truly believes that he has raped Linda. Since our last meeting, I don't think he's changed his mind, in fact, I believe the passing of time has further solidified his viewpoint. That is the reason he is so complicated. Since the Flash Forward episode, audiences have been speculating about your potential comeback. Is Dean likely to participate in Christmas? We are aware that Linda plays a part in the Christmas narrative, and we also know that the majority of people in the square want Dean to return. But since I'm not giving anything away, everyone will have to wait to find out if Dean's the body on the Vic floor. How has it been to work with both new and old faces? It's wonderful to catch up with old friends, like Natalie Cassidy and Lacey Turner, some of whom I have known since I was 18. Adam Woodyott and I are collaborating closely once more, which is fantastic because he is a very wonderful person. Not to give too much away, but Dean will encounter Linda and her new family, the Knights, frequently. They are all great and amazing to deal with. Could you hint to your character's future without giving too much away? Dean has returned to Walford in order to support his daughter Jade, however, in order to do so, he must earn a living and integrate into the society. The largest obstacle, in my opinion, will be dealing with the Walford locals, as they all have justifiably strong feelings about Dean. The CEO of EastEnders teases several cufflinks in a shocking Christmas clue. Pay attention to those cufflinks. The head of EastEnders, Chris Clenshaw, has given us a major preview of the Christmas plot that the BBC soap opera will be telling, and it involves those annoying amber cufflinks. Ever since EastEnders showed a suspenseful flash-forward in February with the corpse of an unidentified male character wearing a noticeable piece of jewelry on his suit sleeve, viewers have been anxiously monitoring the show for any hints. Along with Linda Carter, Suki Panasar, Denise Fox, Stacey Slater, Kathy Cotton, and Sharon Watts in a bridal gown. The cufflinks have been seen frequently since Suki's husband, Nish Panasar, put them up in a poker game that Denise's other half, Jack Branning, won. Later, just before Phil Mitchell's wedding to Kat Slater, Jack gave the cufflinks to Phil in an unexpectedly friendly moment. Though executive producer Clenshaw suggests that there might be more to this specific clue than first meets the eye, we have been guessing that Phil or Nish might be the murder victim. During an interview with Inside Soap, Clenshaw was questioned about any fresh clues regarding the storyline that has been circulating. You're going to be guessing right up until the very last moment, he says. Stories are introduced for each of the six as the fall progresses, culminating to a grand finale. Additionally, even though Phil presently owns the cufflinks, you should keep a lookout for another pair come Christmas. It's a major tease that leaves our speculations flying as we try to figure out exactly what this implies moving forward. Should there be multiple sets of those amber cufflinks, might it be that multiple Walford men will be donning a set on the special day? Can we anticipate seeing someone associated with each of the six, and maybe even other male characters we might not associate with the group, wearing the cufflinks, as Clenshaw has promised to keep us guessing throughout the Christmas episode? It's time to resume our theoretical work. Please subscribe our channel.